Hello, my name is Kevin Zollinger with Journey Team, and I'm here today to talk to you about sensitivity labels. We'll cover the what and the why, and I'll give you some things to consider. Let's get started. So Microsoft would call it a Microsoft PureView sensitivity label. They are used to keep information secure, make sure that only the right people have access to information contained in documents. It's especially important if you deal in a, if you work in a regulated industry such as healthcare or law or finance. Um, in the case of healthcare, for example, if you have protected health information, HIPAA says you have to protect that information. Sensitivity labels are one way that you can do that. You can apply a sensitivity label to an office document, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Acrobat as well. You can apply a sensitivity label to a SharePoint site or an Azure Active Directory group. Using Outlook, you can apply a sensitivity label to an email, and you can apply sensitivity labels to meetings and team chats. You can apply a sensitivity label manually or automatically based on things like location or document title, or using machine learning, which looks inside the document and uses the contents of that document to apply a sensitivity label. What would cause you to want to use a sensitivity label? Let's talk about three examples. And these are just the first three that came to mind for me. There are others. The first is ransomware. And I want to be clear, a sensitivity label will not stop a document from being encrypted by ransomware. But what it will do is it will allow you to identify those documents that contain important or sensitive information and put those in more secure locations. If you have a document in a place where only two or three people can see it and somebody else gets ransomware on their computer, that ransomware won't be able to see your document and thus won't be able to encrypt it. That's a win. The other thing that happens, and this is related frequently, is if you get a bad actor in your network, they're going to run around and look for all the documents that you have that they think might be of value to somebody else, like a competitor, or embarrassing if they were to publish it on the internet. With sensitivity labels, even if they take that document and run away, they can't open it. And because they can't open it, they can't share it with a competitor, and they can't publish it on the internet. The last thing is closely related, and that is secrets. Sometimes we have people in our organizations that want to share secrets with other people that they shouldn't. With sensitivity labels, we make it so they can't do that because we have total control over who can do what with our documents. So let's talk about marking. You can see that I've got a document up top, and I just added a top secret watermark to it. You can also do a header or a footer, and you can make that document be its own color. With a label, in addition to the marking, we can control who can open, forward, print, copy, edit, export, or download a document. And the copy is more than you think it is because it will, for example, make it so that someone who doesn't have copyrights on a document, and I know that copyright sounds like it should be something different. If somebody doesn't have the right to copy a document, they also can't share it in a Teams meeting on their screen. If they try to do that, Teams is going to show a blank screen because Microsoft has thought of that and turned that ability off. We're going to talk at the end about one caveat that you should be aware of. So we've marked the document. What else can we do? Well, you can see I've put a fence around the document. That is because we've encrypted it. And once it's been encrypted, we have even more control over who can do what with that document. We can leverage Azure Active Directory groups based on things like department, job title, country, basically any attribute that Azure Active Directory contains, we can use to control who can have access to that document. We can set a limit on the number of days that a document is available, and we can integrate with conditional access. Conditional access is great because it gives us very fine-grained control over who can open that document. If we wanted to, we could even limit it to specific people on specific devices. That would be a lot of work, and I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. You also have control over whether or not that document can be opened when the computer is offline, and that can be extremely powerful as well. When the document is encrypted, you are completely in control of what happens. You can see at the top of the document that we can actually encrypt it twice or use two keys. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but let's talk about what happens with one key. So I have a document that's been encrypted and somebody gets a hold of it. 
they take it away on a thumb drive or, or whatever, and they now have that document and they want to open it. So here is my document, and my document says to Microsoft, hey, Kev wants to open this document. So it sends a request to open to Microsoft. Microsoft looks at who I am. It looks at the rules around that document. If I'm the right person and the rules allow it, then Microsoft says, yep, Kevin can open that document. I then do whatever I want with it. It's important to note that in a normal situation, the person opening that document will never see that happen because it happens so quickly. What, though, do we do if it's a double key encryption? In that case, there are two requests. First, the document reaches out to Microsoft and again says, hey, can we open? Microsoft says yes. Then the document goes out and makes sure that the person opening that document has approval from your organization. And if both say yes, then that document is open. What this means is that Microsoft can't open your documents. Only you have control over who can open your documents. So that is how sensitivity labels can protect your document. There are a few things that we should know about. The first is licensing. To use the features of sensitivity labels on a document by document basis. So we're going to do it one at a time. We're going to manually label each document. That requires just about any Microsoft Office 365 or Microsoft 365 license. If we want to do it based on location or title or any other automatic labeling, Microsoft tells us that we have to have an E5 license for anyone that benefits from that licensing. The way that they define benefits is anyone that can open and edit that document has to have an E5. If they can only read the document, then an E3 is all they need. The same thing is true with AI-based sensitivity labeling. So if you're going to look at the contents of the document and then assign a label based on the contents, anyone that can edit that document needs an E5. Everyone else is good with an E3. Number two, encryption and labeling only worked with Office documents and Adobe Acrobat. If you're going to apply the label and encryption with Adobe, then you have to have the Acrobat version. If you're just reading the document, then reader's all you need. Third, if you're going to apply an automatic watermark, image, or footer in a document that already has one of those, it may do weird things. And so you'll want to test that and be aware of what's going to happen. Four, we talked earlier about disallowing the copying of content in a document. And it works in almost every use case. But there is one thing that we can't do that is, we can't stop somebody from getting a phone out and taking a picture of a screen. We just can't stop that. What that means is that the last thing, five, is labels aren't magic. You're still going to have to get your security right. You're still going to have to have MFA. You're still going to need to be aware of who's in your network and who's doing what. And you'll want to make sure that anytime you give access to a document to somebody, that you can trust that person not to take their phone out and take a picture of it. With your security right, sensitivity labels become part of your defense in depth or your layered security model and it is one more way that you improve the security of your documents. And that is it for sensitivity labels. I appreciate listening all the way to the end. We'd love to be part of the conversation. If you have questions about sensitivity labels or want to have us help you get them up and running in your organization, here's how you can get a hold of us. We'd be happy to talk to you. Again, thanks for listening and have a great day.